Elizabeth I is considered one of the greatest rulers in England's history, if not the greatest. Um, for women, what an amazing, amazing role model. Um, she never married. Can you blame her? I mean, look at what she grew up with around her dad and all of those moms and stepmoms. She never had any kids, which that causes a problem come her end time, okay, where we have, I don't have an heir. So she eventually does set on a, a cousin up in uh, Scotland, which is the country on the same island of England, but right above it, uh, James, King James of Scotland. She names him as the heir. So when Elizabeth died, King James of Scotland comes down, and he is now the king of England and the king of Scotland. It's like he united two kingdoms. Where do you think the term united kingdom came from? Okay. So in, in referencing... England in that area, in those countries, it's the United Kingdom, and that's because we have um, uh, uh, d d d uh, where are we at here? The Stuarts. So we went from the, the family of Tudors to the family of Stuarts, and that's where um, we start with James and his son, and, and we'll talk more about that when we get to uh, the next unit and so on. The King James Bible, page 414, 415. Um, I'm not as I told you, I'm not going to go through um, necessarily what it was about, but there was some more example of parallel structure here towards the beginning. Um, but the premise of this particular piece, the importance, the historical significance of this, was it was the Bible commissioned in English for the English speakers and English readers. This was the first time. And without that, if you didn't know how to read Latin or French, you were stuck by solely getting your material, this is what the Bible says, solely from your clergy, solely from the church. So you were kind of a mindless robot with regards to um, c comprehending the, the word of God or whatever the, the Bible said on your own. You had to be spoon-fed it. But now that something is in English, and if you can read English, you are able to read it over and over, get your own theories, your own arguments, um, and make your own, you know, your own decisions. Um, so you, you were less mindless. Page 414 is a really nice page that if you, um, if you need to come back to review the significance of this or you can't remember, um, it's pretty good. You can see down at the bottom, you know, it's not only the mo most widely read English book, but the most widely read, excuse me, hold on, for centuries was not only the most widely read English book, but the most widely read English book. I know that that sounds kind of, what does that mean? Um, you know, geographically, as an English book, it wasn't just the most important or the most uh, read, but the, in English around the world. Um, I read a stat forever ago, the number of Bibles that are in existence or that are still printed every year. Um, you know, the highest distributed book in the world is the Bible or, or you know, some stat like that. And I, I wonder if I could find that again and see if it's updated. See if it's still, if that stat is still legit. But because um, people are like, oh man, no, the the Da Vinci Code's the the biggest circulated book. I'm like, the Da Vinci Code is not the biggest circulated book in the world. Oh no, you know, a Don Quixote or something. And I'm like, I I can't speak to Don Quixote. So um, that's something I might just have to look up because that's interesting to me.